Today, we gather in a place of worship, faith and friendship. We gather here in Al Noor Mosque, a home for community and for family. On the 15th of March, tragedy unfolded in this room. A terrorist attempted to sow division and hatred in a place that stands for togetherness and selflessness. He thought he could redefine what this space was. I'm here to help you show the world that he failed. I could not believe the news I was hearing on the 15th of March. A country that seemed to be bucking global trends of division and anger looked like maybe it too would fall victim to those intent on promoting fear and distrust. I have no doubt this is what the terrorists had hoped for. But New Zealand has had other plans. The people of Al-Nur and Linwood Mosques had other plans. In a moment of acute pain, you stood up and you stood together. And in reaction to tragedy, you achieved something remarkable. I have had reasons myself to reflect on grief and sudden pain and loss in my own life. And in my role, I've often seen up close the sorrow of others in moments of tragedy, as I have today. What I've realised is that, of course, grief can change your outlook. You don't ever forget the shock, the sadness and the pain. But I do not believe that grief changes who you are. Grief, if you let it, will reveal who you are. An act of violence was designed to change New Zealand. But instead, the grief of a nation revealed just how deep your wells of empathy, compassion, warmth and love truly run. You started showing what New Zealand really was almost immediately. On the road outside these walls, people pulled their cars over and started caring for the victims, even when they did not know if it was safe to do so. Your neighbours opened their doors to those who were fleeing the violence. Your first responders apprehended the killer and immediately worked to save lives in the most challenging of circumstances. In the days that followed, thousands of bouquets of flowers filled public spaces in the city, brightening the darkest of moments. Your Prime Minister showed extraordinary leadership of compassion and resolve, providing an example to us all. Imam Gabal Fuda, you displayed wisdom and grace that is almost unthinkable given what you witnessed with your own eyes. Your words in the days after the attack moved the world. Your reminder that the victims needed to be remembered both as Muslims and as New Zealanders showed that grief revealed you to be a man of great wisdom. You could not have been more right when you declared that this country is unbreakable. On the map, New Zealand made it like an isolated land. But in the weeks that followed the 15th of March, the moral compass of the world was centred here in Christchurch. You showed the way we must respond to hate with love. What happened here was fueled by a warped ideology that knows no boundaries. The world is rightly united to fight the extremism that has made sorrowful, sorrowful brethren out of cities like New York, Paris, London and Manchester, and that has taken so many lives in Sri Lanka in recent days. And so too we must unite to fight the violent brand of extremism that has led to fatal shootings in a church in Charleston, South Carolina, and in a synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a van attack on the streets of Finsbury Park in London, the murder of an MP in West Yorkshire, and now so many deaths in two mosques here in Christchurch. Extremism in all its forms must be defeated. The message from Christchurch and the message from Al Noor and Linwood Mosques could not be more clear. The global ideology of hate will fail to divide us.